Now, you know what's crazy? Today I was over at my grandmother's house and my uncle was over there and we were talking and he was telling me about a TV show on Netflix. I can't remember the name of the TV show, but he was basically describing the show, <clears throat> describing the show as a kind of one of those post-apocalyptic type shows, end of the world type shows. And he was saying how the, the, the scenario of the TV show was it was a camp and they had women that actually were leading the military front and going to war while the men stayed back and took care of the children and, and made sure everything was safe at home. And so he was just, my uncle was telling me how ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous it was that these 90 pound women were going to battle with like 200 plus pound men and were just obliterating them. And it was, it was so ridiculous. He had to, like, he couldn't make it past the second episode. And we all know that TV shows are fiction and it's meant to be extreme for entertainment purposes. But to some degree, it's got to be some type of realism that we can relate to in order to take it serious. And he just couldn't do it. And that's what we're seeing now with these TV shows. Hollywood is pushing this, this, uh, this rhetoric that, that, that destroys manhood and, and uplifts a false narrative in regards to femininity. And at the heart of what this really is, is it's, a, it's an attack on femininity and manhood. And the reason why these type of TV shows and movies are so popular amongst women is because since the beginning, they've been seeking to usurp authority over men. It started with Eve in the garden. And, uh, and now I'm referring to lost women, okay? Not saved godly women, because the word femininity is not a bad word to God-fearing women. And that's just the truth. And now I want to play a clip in which Vody Balkum talks about how femi feminism is destroying manhood and how this is such a disastrous thing for our society as a whole. You know, one of the obvious yet unspoken consequences of the feminist movement is the feminization of men and the emasculation of men. Men no longer know how, um, nor have the permission to be men. Um, and because of that, we have fathers who are uncomfortable stepping into their role of priest, prophet, provider, and protector in their home. It is a father's responsibility to represent his family before God and to represent God before his family. It is a father's responsibility to train and disciple his children, according to Ephesians 6, 1 through 4, and the discipleship, discipleship of his wife. You know, the, this washing with the water of the word that is emulated, you know, in, in the relationship between Christ and his church. And so it is of the utmost importance for fathers to step into that role, number one, because it's what God commands. And secondly, because according to Ephesians chapter five, in the marriage relationship, we are painting a picture of this relationship between Christ and his church. And so if I am as a man, am not portraying my role accurately, I am misrepresenting the gospel and I'm misrepresenting my savior. And I am robbing my wife and my children of the most important means that God has given to lead them to be faithful followers of Jesus Christ. So it is of the utmost importance that I pray, play, play that role. Um, it's also important because as a father, I am, you know, imprinting the, 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 the minds of my children as it relates to what my sons will look to be and my daughters will look to find in future mates. And so if I fall down on my job as a father, it will have multi-generational implications.